but if you're confident and you think you got this and you want to uh, you want to go for the prize and just come on up here somebody somebody could surely have to remember two or three names okay Molly's coming come on ladies you can't read it. You can't read it. This is not here. You, you got three sets to count. Hurry up. Hurry up. No, you're not allowed to have it. Well, that's cheat sheets. We're here to have fun. This is what we're going to try to. We've got, um, we've got a schedule, and we are going to try, but what we're not going to do is we're not going to hinder the Holy Ghost. All right. So uh, he's gonna he's gonna lead us, and uh, we're gonna have an opportunity just a little bit later. If anybody has anything for it, I come I come from West Virginia, and so when I came down here, they done a little bit things a little bit different. But back there, um, we there was just a few of us, maybe nine or ten, and so we. We just would always follow the Spirit. We never really had an agenda, no time on the clock. And some of us, sometimes if we had a, 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 a testimony or a song on our heart, I'm telling you, that was some of the best services. Amen. Because it's not always the singer who's carried the burden that week. Right. It's not always the appointed person up here speaking or whoever's scheduled to speak that the Lord's been dealing with something. And maybe somebody from the outside's got to come in and they got something to sing about. Maybe they got a testimony. I'm telling you what, we had this one woman back home. She could bless her heart. She could not sing. She could not sing. She could not carry a tune in a bucket. But when that lady started testifying and she started singing, there wasn't nobody to keep their seat and nobody to keep tear. The Lord would sing through her and and the power of the Lord will come into that place. So that's what we're looking for today. And I'm going to hush. I told you all to pray for me. I've never been to sleep, but I've done a lot of talking, so I've got to refrain and remember the schedule. And mind the Lord. So we're going to, uh, what's your name? Melody. Melody's going to give us a shot. And she's going to give this a shot. So. Okay. Zena from Owensboro. I've got Ann from Owensboro. I've got Linda in Evansville, Indiana. I've got Erica from Owensboro. Uh, Molly from West Virginia. Uh, I remember Rice, but I, I can't remember your first name. <laughs> oh, Alma. She don't have. Oh, 
Shepherdsville. Oh, me? No? Oh, um, I know about Sue. No, she's from Kentucky. She was from Evansville? No, Melody was from Shepherdsville. <laughs> well, I think I've got Bill. Um, <laughs> oh, you're talking about Linda from Evansville. Oh, you can't help out, guys. I think I've got one more. I've got. Um, girl, I can't read that. <laughs> Ready for church? All right. 
At this time, we're going to open up the floor. And uh, we're not going to make this, uh, not going to make this a time. We're not going to open up the floor. <laughs> we are going to uh, invite Sister Ellen to come up and sing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this is not a traditional conference. You notice you did not receive a printed program. We are only having one speaker, and that's Minister Tina Lord later. So basically, you are the program. Uh, I will be singing some, but we will also give others an opportunity. Um, if they want to lead us in a song, just go back to the days when we were growing up, or at least when in my church, and we would have our song service, and then the floor would be open for testimonies. We don't want a sermon, but we want you to feel free to come and testify. Scripture reminds us that we're overcome by our testimony. And our theme today is exclusively He is ready to serve. So you have the option of giving a testimony about something that the Lord has done or is doing in your life, or if you already know how He wants you to serve outside of church on Sunday, then we would love for you to share that because that, that may inspire someone else that's just sort of on the fence and not sure how to move forward on what he's done. We serve a mighty God, right? Yeah. You are also the choir, so everyone sing. Yeah. We got the lyrics. We have EJ as our musician.
and he took all the goods with him. He knew the destruction was coming. So he took the last two reigning daughters of the king of Judah. The king was murdered, and so was his sons, but not his daughters. You know where they sailed to? The British Isles. They landed in there. They became queens. And from then we descended. Children, you don't know who you are. You're royal. You're royal descendants from the tribe of Judah. We come across. We're getting ready to step into some things, ladies. We're getting ready to step in. God's getting ready to call us up higher. We're kings and queens in a royal house. My daughter said, Mommy, I want to sing. And I asked the sister if she could sing, and she said, There'd be time. So, come on, Molly. This baby's been singing. Molly's my only biological child, and the only thing I ever asked from the Lord, I didn't ask the Lord to let her look like me, because you see, God, and I knew better than I ask anything like that. <laughs> but I just said, Lord, <laughs> let her sing for you. So ever since she's been a baby, we'd set up a playpen in the corner of the church. We'd sit her, stick her up in that playpen. When they start singing, she'd start raising little hands. <laughs> she'd go to praise them. But she could sing before she could talk. She has a song that she'd like to share for you, with you. Well, I just want to thank you, Lord, for every time you've heard me pray. I just want to thank you for always being there.
when it was time to have lunch. And I think the schools have become more sensitive now that maybe everyone gets free lunch. But back in the day, you were given a card that said free lunch and then it had Alma Randolph on it. Well, the schools were really marking the disadvantaged children from the others. And so even though I would be hungry, I would go to my teacher and ask for permission to go to the restroom. And I'd take my little free lunch card and then strategically place myself in line with other children that would be presenting their cards. I could go on and on about the experiences that I had during that time that were so painful, they're still so real to me today. I remember as a little girl, people say all the time, why do you dress up all the time, why, why, why? And it's because I still remember that little girl yes. that said, one day, I, when I grow up, I will walk in a room and nobody will be able to look down their nose at me. Yes. We, have to, yes. we have to be very sensitive to children, yes. especially when they're less fortunate because the little egos, their prides can be stripped. Thank God I had a loving mom that taught me to dream every so often. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? So she taught me to dream, but God had his hands on me. Yes. And in 1993, he began to touch my heart to reach out and to help those children that were experiencing the same thing that I did. And I knew that it was God, but I was disobedient. And we need to understand, ladies, delayed obedience is still disobedience. I'm just so thankful that God didn't give up on me. And in March of 1993, one morning I woke up and I said, okay, God, today's the day. And in my mind, I'm thinking, as I begin to share this vision with others, nobody's going to embrace it. Then I can come back and tell God, okay, I tried. But I was scared to death of failure. And many of you may be in a situation right now where God is dealing with you to do whatever, but you become more focused on what if I fail? What if sister, sister so-and-so thinks this? What if brother so-and-so thinks this? And I was wrestling with that. That's the reason that I was delaying and finally saying yes. But that day, to make my story short, every mover and shaker in this community that I approached about my vision said, what can I do to help? A bank is on board. A CDF is on board. And the Alma Randolph Charitable Foundation was founded. I was told, and another thing, Dalton Thomas is always going to come along yeah. to tell you that it's not going to be, I was told it'll be five years before you can see that you've made a difference. If you last that long, I mean, all of the negativity, it will come. It's Satan is going to see the negativity because he knows God's already told you to do. The first concert was on my birthday on a snowy night. We filled the River Park Center and we were able to clothe 160 disadvantaged children. Today, we clothed over 17,500 
And I knew it was God, and I said, He's got to see. And I, on the side of the shower wall, I wrote the first letter of each word, Huts. Hands up to succeed. I called my friend Melinda. I said, I got it, I got it, I got it. She tolerates so much for me, so. And I said, I heard the Lord. I said, I've got the mission. She said, What is it? I said, Hands up to succeed. Hats, we're going to call the project. And she said, Girl, you better stop. You better stop. <laughs> and Hats was born since December of 2016. Their project will be eight years old next month. Oh, yes. blessed us to upgrade the living conditions of 82 disadvantaged families. We have no head staff. Sister Alma doesn't get any of the money. When I set the foundation up, the Lord was clear. I am not to take a penny. And to this day, I can stand here and say, I've never We have no pay staff. We're a nonprofit recognized by the Internal Revenue Service. So the money that's given is a tax write-off. It goes directly to the families. The Hutch Project is designed to give a family a hand up and not a hand out. We gotta be careful about hand out. Because too many of us are just giving it, we're giving it, and there's no accountability. A family must be working or medically disabled. They must have to children in the home. And then we do the walk through. You wouldn't believe how many of our family do not have beds to sleep in. Yes. Or they may not have living room furniture. Or they may not have a table to sit down as a family and have a meal. And we send them away. They're picked up by limo, free of charge, one of our partners, escorted away to the Holiday Inn, which is where you all stayed last night, another partner. And they stay there two days while our volunteers, we go in and completely furnish the home with wall decor and what have you. When they return home, if they don't have a pastor, we have a minister there to bless the home before they walk through. But 82 families <laughs>
love you, I don't think you really know who you are. You know, sister was singing that song, He Died for Us All. But you see, all of you all are righteous blood. You're not going to hear this coming from too many white preachers, especially women. But what about that royal blood that came from Africa? Sister, a lot of you all know it because you all dug in the scriptures to find your identity. But I know it too because the Lord showed me. And He said, I want you to go tell them who they are. Because the Bible says when the Queen of the South crosses up, who was the Queen of the South? Queen Sheba. We honor her. We honor her. We honor that bloodline. We honor my sister. You're my sister. My sister, I love my sister. Love you. Love you. Love you all. We've been asked to introduce the speaker. And I get to introduce her because she's my, I've known her the longest. <laughs> I've known her for 40, 44 years. Wow. Yeah, 44 years. She's my sister in law. She's my pastor. <laughs> my smart aleck pastor, as Bishop said back there earlier. <laughs> yeah, he called her smart aleck. But Tina came from the southeastern part of Kentucky in the mountains of Bell County. And that's where she met my brother And in high school. They both played basketball. And they couldn't stand each other at first. <laughs> Because uh, Tina was one of the rough, you can call her a redneck, and, uh, but we were raised, if you want to have a, a girlfriend or boyfriend, they need to be in church with you. So she had attended a Baptist church, there's nothing wrong with being a Baptist, but God had more for Tina. He had a destiny for her and she and my brother fell in love and she started attending church there at Cary Church of God of Prophecy which was a little bitty small church sitting on the side of a mountain that is still sitting there to this day and being uh, used but God called her uh, to, to be my sister-in-law but to be his wife and then he called her to preach and through her came the salvation of not just her brother and her sister, but her mother and her father. Yeah. 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 And now that's continued on through their children. Yeah. They they are now serving the Lord as well. All because a little girl from the mountains of Kentucky was obedient and said, Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. And then we got her. <laughs> and I'm oh so thankful. Um, she's my sister. She's my friend. She's my confidant. And I don't know where I'd be without her. So I hope that she blesses you because she's going to bear her heart and soul to you. And she's going to give you Jesus. and 
Bible school that, that day. And on the way back home, that's how we got back home. And my mom, boy, she was at work and she got off work. She was headed up Highway 66. And she said, look at those kids in the back of that trunk of that car. That is so dangerous. And then she got a little closer and she said, oh, those are my kids. <laughs> Four years. 
one flesh. Yes. I become bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Yes. So what does it mean for me to be exclusively his? What does it mean? That meant that there is an exclusion of others. Yes. Only. Only him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Solely in an exclusive manner. In a way 
should I say to fit your pocket? <laughs> or to sit on your bed? You remember back in the day when used to TV was watching TV was a sin and everybody had one but they just slide in the closet and went to the preacher place.
children. The church, you in the house. The church, you and I, we are the church. We make up the bond. Yes. Now, them girls said, well, what am I worried? I was worried about that head coming off of there. <laughs> I said, well, if it rolls off of there when you're bringing it out, we'll understand that that's just how we as a, a lot of churches are. We're a church body without head. Right. But you know what? You can go out there in this world and you can go after 
passions never fail. Yes. They are new every morning. Every Great is yes. thy faithfulness. Yes. Great yes. is thy faithfulness. Rid your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love, and he relents from sin and calamity. Joel 2.13. Hosea 14.4. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. Zechariah 1.3. Therefore, tell the people that is what the Lord Almighty says. Return to me, declares the Lord. Almighty, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. We have got to repent. Yes. Yeah. Now, you all can agree with me or you don't have to. As a nation, as a church, yes, I remember years ago in our general assembly, the Lord would call us to repent. The Holy Ghost would call our church to repentance. Right. And people would stand around like, what do we need to repent for? Yeah. I don't care what it was. If God says you need to repent, yeah. I bow my knee and I say, God, forgive me. Yeah. As a nation, yeah. we need to repent because we have failed. When they took the Ten Commandments out of school, who stood up? Right. When they took it out of the courthouses, who stood up? Right. Yes. Yeah, we're the bride of Christ, right? We're exclusively His. We're, we're His alone. That means that we're that nobody else. Yeah. Are we? Yeah. Have we? Right. Do we? church. John the Baptist describes he himself as a friend of God. The bridegroom as Jesus Christ. You yourself bear witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. The one who is the bride, it is the bride, has the bride, is the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase that I might decrease. When people look at me, they shouldn't see me. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, wait. Let me get my phone. I've got to take this.
stayed. The God. We've not presented ourselves as a royal priesthood, a holy nation. But God says, I do have a people within a people. What do we do? We repent. Well, I didn't do nothing wrong. Repent anyway. Say, God, forgive us. Would you walk down the aisle to meet your beloved? Would you walk down the aisle and meet your beloved in a stained garment? Never would think to do that, would you? that I belong on and that there's nobody else but him. 